Jim Triggs, the executive director of the Heritage Program for the St. John's Bible. That's a mouthful. That's <laughs> a mouthful. Yeah. It certainly is. From Collegeville, Minnesota, where the Saint, the home of the St. John's Bible. Uh, obviously, the, the first handwritten, hand illuminated Bible commissioned by a Benedictine Abbey in some 400 years. An incredible work of art. Uh, welcome to Salt and Life. Oh, it's great to be here. It's a real pleasure and an honor. So thanks for having me. You're in charge of the Heritage Program, which is uh, basically a group of, of copies of the Bible, but they're not just sort of printed copies, they're almost works of art in themselves. Tell us about the, the Heritage Project. Yeah, it really, goes, it really ties directly to the mission of the project. So the mission from the get-go was to ignite the spiritual imagination of people around the world. At the end of the day, St. John's is a small liberal arts university in the middle of Minnesota in Lake Wobegon. How do you reach the world with a single manuscript that's done by hand? And that was, just, that was talked about early in the project. And so Donald Jackson was very involved in the idea of making fine art editions that were true to the artistic intent of the original that could be placed with institutions and people around the world that would then share them with their community. So that if you live in Europe or Asia or Africa or different parts of the United States, you don't have to uh, beat a path to central Minnesota to see the St. John's Bible. Now, the, the original Bible is obviously, uh, you know, everything's hand-written and hand-illuminated on the, the calfskin vellum using these ancient uh, manuscript writing techniques and everything. The Heritage Edition is a little bit different than that, but it's still quite a complicated process. So, so what are you getting, what are you holding when, when, you're, when you're looking at and touching and reading the Heritage Edition? Well, in, in all aspects of the aesthetics, Donald wanted to be true to the original. So, for instance, the paper that was used, rather than using calfskin vellum like the original, we used 100% cotton paper, and the cotton paper has a certain weight that mimics vellum. Um, he wanted to use real illuminations, gold and silver illuminations on this, so it's truly an illuminated Bible. Um, one of the ironies of the project is that Donald used medieval tools to create the original manuscript. We use actually very state-of-the-art tools, so uh, that we used this Heidelberg press that had been, had been developed shortly before the project started, and it had these very, very high-tech printing capabilities that made these vibrant colors come to life on this cotton paper. Um, but we also used some hand operations. So for instance, on the original, Donald would put down gold on top of colors and then sand away the gold so the colors would come through. And there was no way to really automate that. So he had Sarah Harris, who worked in the studio in Wales, come to Minnesota and she actually hand treated these in both the Heritage Edition and the Apostles Edition to make it true to the original. Now, uh, one, of the, one of the copies of the Heritage Edition uh, is actually just up the street from us here at Salt and Light at, at Regis College, the Jesuit College, they have one. Uh, how did it end up there? And, uh, you know, is it the only place in Canada that, that we see one of, the, one of the Bibles? No, we're thrilled that Regis was actually the first spot here in Canada that received a Heritage Edition. And there's a benefactor in the States that gave it to Regis. Regis has done fantastic things, by the way, in terms of outreach to churches in the greater Toronto area. Further west, uh, St. Mary's University College in Calgary, which is a small Catholic college in, Alber in Calgary, Alberta, um, has done some phenomenal programming with it as well. They actually have an outreach where you can get a certification in fine arts um, through their program in Calgary. So we're really thrilled with that. And then finally, the most recent one is uh, Bishop Dem Remy Deroux. Bishop Remy Deroux, I think he's the last English-speaking bishop that was one of the council fathers in the Vatican. That's right, a young bishop at the time. Young bishop at the there. time, yeah. yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, he was recently at the canonization of John the 23rd and John Paul II, and he was sitting in a wheelchair because he needed a little help getting around, and he had one of the Vatican II rings on, and Pope Francis passed, saw the ring, and Pope Francis got on his knee and kissed his ring, which was a great thrill for uh, Bishop Remy Deroux. Uh, but Remy is now 91, but on his 90th birthday, he had a he said, he, w he went around British Columbia and said, I want to have a Bible for my 90th birthday, but not just any Bible, I want the St. John's Bible. <laughs> and his idea was, the University of Victoria has this great religion and science, Center for Religion and Science, and the idea is this dialogue between religious and science and the religion from all denominations, and uh, raise the money so that they could acquire it. And so now it's now part of a permanent fixture at University of Victoria.